There is this feeling you get when watching sports anime. A feeling that you were born in this world to make an impact. A feeling that you're here for a reason. To overcome the challenges in front of you, to rise above and see the top of the mountain you wish to climb. To pursue something that doesn't seem impossible. But it does this by showing all of the hardships, all of the struggle, all of the failure. And through that, we see each character grow. We see their performances rise to the occasion. That the power they have inside of them takes over and pushes them forward. And the most recent sports anime to do this so brilliantly is Haikyuu. It's known that there have been many throughout the years that have done this and succeeded in its message. But what makes Haikyuu stand out from the rest is how it is able to mix many different things we have seen not only in sports anime, but anime in general. The use of animation, the essence of willpower grounded in a believable world. The combination of these three elements captures perfectly the need for the viewer to relate themselves to the characters we see on the screen. If you just have willpower, then the relatability can only be felt in something we would like to have. But if the character is shown to be doing something that feels believable, that feels relatable through his or her inexperience, creating characters that showcase flaws and insecurities that many teenagers go through in their lives, then we ultimately become those characters on the page and on the screen, which Haruishi Furudate so beautifully encompasses in the manga and production IG emulates perfectly in the show. We become Hinata wanting to jump above the net and see the top of the mountain. We become Kagayama to trust in other people around us to help us achieve in what we want. We become Tanaka believing that at times we just need to go for it. We become Asahi, believing more in ourselves despite our insecurities. We become Nishinoya and through our eccentricities we influence those around us. We become Daishi to lead thanks to the experience we have after everything we went through. We become Sugawara to be mature enough to take a step back. We become Yamagushi, learning to grab the moments we have in our lives and make some sort of impact. And we become like Tsukishima, realizing probably the most important thing there is in anyone's life. But before diving deep into that, it's important to go back to where this all began, to the heart of the show, to its first episode where it introduces us to Shoyo Hinata, someone who at the time feels like he's the only one to really love this sport, that has to convince his friends to join the volleyball team so he can compete in an official tournament, to fight against the best, if only for a moment to showcase his abilities. And then this happens. And I'm going to stop here, because there's so much to dissect in this moment, so much to unpack. And for that, we're not just going back to this moment, we're going back all the way to where sports anime truly began. Probably the biggest case for a sports anime to impact the world thanks to its realism and heavy journey was Ashita no Joe. So, despite the manga being written and illustrated by Ikikajiwara and Tetsuya Chiba, it was Osamu Dezaki that made a massive impact with its distinctive style of animation. In his attempt to direct animation with a limited use of budget and being influenced by the cinema that came before him, he became creative in the visual telling of a story. And it was this creativity that influenced the whole generation of anime. From Dragon Ball to the 2011 anime of Hunter x Hunter, some of the most compelling scenes were achieved thanks to what Osamu Dezaki had done beforehand, the most well known being the postcard memories technique which was used to transition into a freeze frame that visually resembled that of a faded painting. This was done for a bigger impact in regards to a climatic and key moment of a show. But it wasn't just this that made him such a master at directing anime. The use of revolving backgrounds that were used during certain scenes, or the repetition of frames to give a bigger impact of a punch or a kick. This was all done to both tell the story in the most impactful way possible, while also saving as much money as he could when making each episode. And one use of this was the use of lines in regards to the movements of characters. So even though you're only seeing a still image of the character, the use of lines around the still image makes it seem that the movement movement is so much more than what we're actually seeing. And many times, I feel this conveys more movement and emotion than trying to emulate the exact movement in animation. If there is anyone who gives sense to the phrase, less is more, it's Osamu Dezaki. Which is why so many anime chose to also portray his unique style and develop it through the years. Which is why this moment in the first episode of Haikyuu is so iconic. 
how moments before we saw the perfect use of 3D animation blend perfectly with the traditional style of animation that we have come to know and love for so many years. And we see Hinata in this moment showcase his ability, his passion, his inner strength, his true emotion, his willpower. My question now is, where does that willpower come from? In the early 80s, there was a manga and anime that follows a young boy who is so devoted to football, aka soccer, and his wish to win the World Cup for Japan, that his love for the sport will overcome any obstacle he faces. And that boy's name is Tsubasa. It was this anime that impacted me the most, even more than Dragon Ball. More specifically, a retelling and continuation of the anime that was released in the 90s called Captain Tsubasa J. Though I'm not saying that Haikyuu was directly influenced by Captain Tsubasa. Rather, it was Captain Tsubasa that paved the way for so many other sports anime that came after. Similar to how Dragon Ball did the same for shonen anime. And the reason why Captain Tsubasa was so successful was due to the captivating nature of its protagonist. Seeing a young character like Tsubasa, who believed that anything was possible, who would never give up in any circumstance, would rise constantly and face the obstacles in front of him. And the bigger the challenge, the more fired up he would be for each match. But Tsubasa was also a way to get to know his rivals too, who seemed more human, more flawed, with at times incredible character development that impacted the story in such a meaningful way. And by the end, we relate with all of these characters around Tsubasa. We see these characters try so hard, fail, but then smile because they have someone to chase, someone to look up to, someone who they wish to be. And it's this premise that starts our story of Haikyuu. We don't follow Tsubasa, we follow a character who wishes to be like Tsubasa, or in this case, like Little Giant, who also adorns the number 10 on his back. A protagonist who is not experienced, who is clumsy, who has not yet honed his skills, who wishes one day to be like the person he sees on TV. Hinata looks at Little Giant the same way all the characters look at Tsubasa, and through that, we feel the willpower that Hinata ends up feeling and doing whatever it takes to become that person. In every moment of the show, in every match, in every play, in every ball he hits. Including this iconic moment shown in the first episode. This willpower is so important to fully invest ourselves in this character. Because it's a driving force to achieve the goals and dreams we want in our lives. But remember, Hinata is not like Tsubasa, he's not immediately a winner, and thus we see him hit the ball only for it to go out. Hinata ultimately loses his first competitive match, he is presented with his first defeat, which brings an aspect of realism that is so needed for this journey he takes, one that can be found in arguably the most iconic sports anime ever made, and probably the one where Haikyuu takes most influence from, and that is Slam Dunk. This manga and anime was able to do something that had not yet been witnessed properly in the world of Japanese animation, at least not with this success. It presented us with a character, not one that was capable to do everything, but the exact opposite. Because Sakuragi, the protagonist of Slam Dunk, has never played basketball before. He has to prove himself before others and show that he has the potential to become a great basketball player one day. And so, we see him trying to try and develop his skills one by one. Which is very similar to what we see with Hinata in Haikyuu, someone who is also inexperienced in many aspects, and also slowly learns new ways to develop his skills and become a better volleyball player. In addition, Sakuragi also has to play in the same team that his rival plays, one that is extremely talented and skillful, and both don't really get along with each other. Similar to what happened initially with Hinata and Kagayama. Heck, even the characters themselves look similar with Sakuragi and Hinata's eccentric red hair, which contrasts heavily with Rukawa and Kagayama's simple black hair. And the main inspiration it takes from Slam Dunk is the journey of failure that these characters have to take. In Slam Dunk, when failure is met, it is devastating, and we see our characters having to grow immensely through it. Because by losing, it makes each match actually mean something, and you're never entirely sure what the outcome is going to be. 
and so, when they win, it becomes a whole lot more satisfying, which is something that Captain Tsubasa never really tries to do. And Haikyuu takes this aspect of failure found in Slam Dunk and takes it even further, which leads us into one of my favorite moments of the whole show. At the end of the first season, we see Karasuno fight with all their hearts against one of the strongest teams in their region, a team named by Aoba Josai, one that worked as one unit through the mining experience of Oikawa. But with all these plays from Karasuno that we've come to know, to see them finally come together to rise through their willpower through the amazing quick spikes that both Hinata and Kagayama seem to pull off so well, it reaches a wall. A wall that is shown suddenly in front of Hinata after he opens his eyes. A wall that would stop Karasuno's journey through the inter-high tournament. What seemed like certain victory thanks to Hinata and Kagayama's quick spikes that have worked so well throughout the entire tournament, the most powerful technique that Karasuno possesses is what caused them to fail. All thanks to Oikawa's ability to foresee the play and set up the block beforehand. What comes next is the whole team struggling with this defeat. All of the work that was put in all came to a loss in that one moment. A match that felt that Karasuno should have won but didn't. It didn't just feel like a show you were watching where the characters hit a dark point in the story, but more importantly, it really felt like you were watching a match and had no idea what the outcome was going to be. It's incredibly well done, reminiscent of so many moments I had witnessed watching many sports and see the team that I wanted to win fail. It really hits you hard because you know what it is like to devote yourself to something for so long with the potential of being great, only to lose close to the end. And then because you know the characters so well, because you know their strengths and flaws, it feels like you have an insight into this team that you were supporting. To see them cry, to see the failure on their faces. And more importantly, to see Hinata and Kagayama fight against one another because each one feels like they are the reason they failed. Which forces our characters to slowly build up from this again, to playing practice matches where the objective wasn't to win, but to improve their weak points, to try new things, to develop their techniques more, and to turn their ultimate technique into one without any weaknesses whatsoever. To develop a quick spike that could be fully controlled, to give the ability to Hinata to choose where he wants to hit the ball. And it's this exact same scene that we would witness at the end of Season 2, precisely against Aoba Josai in his Spring High Qualifiers, where Hinata is able to observe exactly where he wants to hit the ball in order to win the match. We can only fully appreciate this moment because we have seen Karasuno lose before and we have seen what it has done to them. That is why the moment of defeat at the end of Season 1 resonates so much. It's the one scene that hit me the most due to what it meant to me, to how relatable failure is, because we've all gone through it and we know how much it hurts. But we also know how failure can be so important in our lives, which leads to another moment in Haikyuu that I feel is necessary to touch upon, to talk about the only character who didn't cry at the end of Season 1, and that is... Tsukishima. Tsukishima is shown to be a very reserved character, one who likes to be negative but not in a passionate way. He has the perfect height to be a strong member of Karasuno, especially when it concerns blocks, but doesn't seem to fully commit to it, which is why we never really see him shine throughout Season 1. And by the end, when everyone is crying due to the loss, he keeps himself reserved. But during the time they spend in Tokyo for their practice matches, when everyone practices really hard to develop their skills, he starts to get angry, annoyed, that he sees so many of his teammates work so hard again. Asking himself, why do they train so hard if you're just going to suffer later? Especially when it comes to a sport where there can only be one winner. Why strive so hard to most likely fail? telling himself that the volleyball team is just a club. And we understand this from him due to what happened earlier in his life when he found out that his brother wasn't playing volleyball anymore. How it shattered the beliefs he had, that fighting for something is simply not worth it. However, when he poses this question to a member of one of the Tokyo teams, he gets quite mad at Tsukishima, posing the question, do you find volleyball fun? explaining that if you strive so hard and work to become better, there will be a moment that you will find yourself doing something that will just click with you, realizing that you're able to do something that you once thought impossible. And it's these moments that you work hard for. It's not just about winning, but the feeling that you're closer to winning. Only then will Tsukishima find volleyball worth fighting for. After this, we see Tsukishima slowly start to take the sport more seriously 
slowly become more useful in matches, slowly using his wits more and working together with the team. And after they beat Aoba Josai, they will have to face Shira Torizawa in the final of the Spring Height Qualifiers, a team that Aoba Josai was never able to defeat. It's here that we witness Tukishima experience his first impactful moment. At the end of set 2, slowly analyzing the opponent, figuring out ways to make them lose their composure, waiting for the right opportunity to find a slight weakness, noticing that the setter made a lower pass than usual, he finally finds an opportunity against the strongest spiker Karasuno had ever faced, who completely destroyed them in the first set. And Tsukishima would use this person to his advantage, not only by blocking him, but also by winning the point and securing a 1-1 set tie in the final. And we see Tsukishima realize that this was able to happen thanks to his newfound determination of wanting to actually win. A moment that he felt was worth fighting for. A moment he celebrated like never before. This is what Haikyuu does so incredibly well. It really touches upon failure and shows how it's affected these players. And what seem to be at first unimportant characters actually have some of the best character developments we've ever seen in an anime. But more so, creating ones that are so believable and relatable at the same time. So much so that when Karasuno is able to beat Shira Torizawa, we don't see Tsukishima fully celebrate at the end. Rather, he felt like he could have done more despite being crucial in Karasuno's victory. It's not so much that he actually failed, but rather that he now cares for the sport he is playing in and wanted to do more. It's incredible to witness a sports anime that is able to do this encompassing things we have seen in so many sports anime of the past, while also creating one of the most relatable and impactful stories we've ever seen. Not only focusing on their victories, but why those victories happened in the first place. Showcased incredibly well through the journey they had to take. Which is exactly what is shown in the first episode with Hinata's amazing spike that ultimately goes out. This first iconic moment embraces all of the aspects that Haikyuu possesses at its core. Its willpower, but also the path through failure. Which is why I'm going to get a little personal now. I've had many moments where I feel like I failed, where I feel like I could have done more. And it brings me to ask the same questions that Tsukishima asks. Why bother if I'm going to suffer by the end? But I have a goal that I have pursued since I was a teenager. What that goal is, I will not say. But it's a goal that has driven me for most of my life. In the meantime, I've decided to make these YouTube videos where I talk about the things I love and share them with you, which I've been doing for a year now. It's been hard because sharing something that is personal to you is never easy. But at the same time, it's given me moments of happiness, even if at times everything just seems too hard. And I think the reason why I pick myself up is thanks to everything that has inspired me throughout the years. Not only films that have captured beauty in ways I had never seen before, but also thanks to anime that has been a massive part of my life. Especially Captain Tsubasa, where I saw a character that was so strong in his willpower that he was going to do whatever it took to fulfill this dream of his. And thanks to the existence of that character, I was impacted by it immensely and decided to pursue a path of my own. And I'm certain the same can be said for so many people out there. So when I watched Haikyuu, I realized eventually why I loved it so much. I realized that the new generation of people would be massively influenced by this, similar to how I was with Captain Tsubasa. That they would see themselves in this young protagonist who looks up to someone he feels is special. Someone who is going to do everything in his power to pursue his ultimate goal. Someone who would grow through the struggles and failures he would face in his life. And it would inspire so many people to do the same. Just like the little giant did for Hinata, just like Tsubasa did for me many years ago. If we look at this on its surface, this is just an anime about characters who play volleyball. Which the same thing could be said about any sport. Football is just kicking a ball. Basketball is just bouncing a ball. And volleyball is just hitting a ball. But if that were the case, then no one would watch sports. We watch sports because there is a real life narrative that goes on with these characters, whether they are on a pitch or on a court. That they are fighting for something. That each tournament they compete, out of dozens, even hundreds of teams, there can only be one winner. And thus, their probability of losing is high. 
So when you do lose, you succumb to a moment where you feel like you're worthless, that you're not good enough, that you shouldn't even be doing this at all, that all of this, days, weeks, months, years, were all for nothing, until you pick yourself back up and try again, not just to win, but for the pursuit of it. And during that pursuit, the more you push, the more it is likely to have a moment. A moment where you are able to impact people around you. And when that happens, an overwhelming feeling consumes you. You're living in that moment. A moment you know you impacted in a very special way. Whether it was the biggest trophy in the world, or something as small as winning a point. That lets you know that you're not worthless that you're somebody capable and all you can do is cheer as loud as you can and take in that moment as much as possible. Once it's over, you fight for another moment like that. That's what Haikyuu teaches us. That's what sports shows us. But most of all, that's what life is all about. At least, that's what life is all about for me.